I always went, went off looking at, looking at foxes uh, to try and see could I see them. Anyway, like down, down the fields. Before I had the foxes, I'd just be down, uh, any place to be cubs born, I'd be down watching yeah, badgers or anything like that. And anything wildlife. I would love wildlife. Like, you know, any kind of it, doesn't matter. Drawing you fell into a box in Columbus. The, the food comes on a Wednesday and, and it's put in fridges like, and boxes are thrown into, into another shed and to have enough to put them through a, sh a shredder like. And Grania was the result of it. But she was about seven or eight weeks old. And he, he rang, up, rang me and said, would you take a fox cub? And I said, I'd oh, take him, chance on. And I put, uh, he, I'm out in the box and I, I put in my hand in, into him and he bit me the first time. <laughs> Apart from that, she's a lovely little little thing, but she's very small. She's after doing a good few films and I bring her to schools as well, like, you know, she's very, she's very, very kind little girl. Lovely, lovely head on her for photographs or anything. Yeah, I was born in, uh, the, that person born in Kilmurray House on the road in 1949. There wasn't anyone born in it for over a hundred years, I think. We stay in a, a house, but uh, when I was born, uh, they couldn't get me into the hospital. So they brought my mother down to Kilmurray House and that's where I was born. Dad was born in 1918 and Amy was born in 1923. And um, got married in 1940. She had 11 children, seven boys and four girls. They always had a love for animals. My father was a cowman in Kilmurray. You just breed bulls. Aberdeen Angus bulls and shorthorn bulls. All the cows are purebred shorthorn, every one of them. I remember in 1963 he used to milk 66 cows by hand, start at 4 o'clock in the morning to have them milked for before um, 8 o'clock. And he'd be singing, he'd have a different song for every, every cow. If he wasn't singing he'd be whistling. <laughs> Probably ten past seven in the morning. The first thing you do is feed the cats. Well, then the, the cats be up. I let them into the room then to feed them. I have six cats, and then I feed the dog, and then I feed myself. Get me breakfast, and uh, I bring the dog down the road. Shortly after eight o'clock, about ten past eight. If I bring him later, he'll be jumping. Any cares that come up the road, he just jumping on. So you have to keep a good hold on him. And I'd bring home then and I'd go feed the hens. And let him out. Then I'd feed, um, bring the foxes, two foxes for a walk. Don't bring down a bit the road like and then clean herself really. And I come home and I'd have the the tea and bring in the foxes then. I bring in a, a Henry first. And Henry goes behind the settee there and I bring in Grown a second and then Minnie. And I'd have the dog the dog goes down to the room when I'm bringing them in and when they, when when I'm all in then the dog starts playing with Minnie and they'd be lying there and the dog would be lying here and Minnie be here and they'd be pulling at each other, pulling and he'd be he'd be pulling more at the fox. But he he's, he's meant to get the foxes. I give the fox a little kind of cube nuts. And the dog is mad again and he'd be over and pulling trying to pull her out of the bed to get the nuts. But um Grania kinda of be wary of him like. But she, she never bit him yet, but she, she'd show him her teeth, like, you know, just, just to tell him to stay away from, from here. I got Minnie off a catty cow, and she had her for a year. I was down in Wexford, and when I came home, brother home, he said that, that uh, there was a woman in Kilmagany, but she wanted somebody to take the fox. I rang her, and, and, uh, and she said she had over 60 phone calls, and she was waiting for me to ring. And she went, when I rang her, she said, thanks be to God, she says. <laughs> so yeah, I went down and I ended up with her. But she's a lovely fox. Uh, she's in the Guinness ad. And she, does, she was in the film last week now, last weekend in Smithfield. She, she just uh, loves women. 
But if there's men around, like she, she wouldn't be the same at all. She's 10 now. Grania's 11. It'll be 11 this month, next month. She's always playing, play, or teasing the dog, playing with him. And meant to play with the dogs, but she, she was rare with dogs anyway, like, you know. She's a lovely little. She's too fat of them. <laughs> it's Mum had, uh, remember, she had a lovely dog here one time, a Doberman, actually. The Doberman was cruelly treated down below the and mm. down and he used to get terrible beatings but uh, man took him in anyway and he turned out to be the kindest Doberman you've ever seen in your life now, you know. Everywhere man went the dog walked beside her, even going up to, she used to go up to the There's plantation up here mm. and the dog would always walk in front of everyone. Man then she, be, she used to reward the hens when they laid an egg, she was bringing up a bowl of porridge, that you know the raw porridge, flakes, and, and reward them for laying an egg. And she'd sit talking to them, and she used to sit, often sit above in the, the summer talking to the hens. We had uh, many stray dogs here one time. Seven. She, seven stray dogs here one time. She took oh. them all in, and she loved them all. Oh. And you'd, you'd think it was a think they were a huskies or something good. <laughs> <laughs> and they were all, all different breeds. There were none of them the same. She always had the idea that all animals have a right to the world. She didn't look down on foxes or badgers, even to tuck a hen. You know, that didn't come into it at all. It's part yeah. of nature, like, you yeah. know. This Henry Fox. He's um, going on five. When he was four weeks old, he got attacked by a dog, and uh, he... Um, a uh, man brown down that a uh, dog attacked, uh, attacked uh, Henry and I ran over to the local vet, John Canellan was his name and I thought John had bummed down, he was that bad I say he got 60 stitches in his body he, after I think a week he got a blood clot off his head his tail is all, his tail is all upside down and crooked, all bent and he has a ligament scan on his left paw that will never come right and it's his left eye, the dog bit him down to his eye and up to his lower jaw. And he has no glare, he has no glare in the left left eye. And his um, jaw is three eighths of an inch shorter than it should be. He's liable to get fits, like, you know, so you have to you know, be lucky to be there with him, like, when he gets him, like, you know, just hold him, like, and stop his body from shaking. It's brutal, like, the. It, the whole body would be jumping a foot off the ground like and he lying down like, oh, it's just amazing to see it. You know, it's, um, well, I could say that John Cannell had done a great job on him anyway, like, you know, like you wouldn't even know where he was stitched, that'll tell you he was. Uh. Naturally, I'd rather see foxes in the wild because they are wild creatures, but then again, the foxes pets they have could not be released because the other tribes or if you like of foxes or would kill them. They, then they had never been trained how to hunt so they just wouldn't survive. But I'm, I'm really delighted he has foxes and, and, and he, actually it's a great credit that he stuck with them so long and, and actually they, they feed, they, they eat more than he does. <laughs> he nursed everyone and back to health and, and, and despite the cost of, of even bottoms of vets to get injections every year from the vets for tetanus and all that kind of situations. And but he, he pays for all that out of his own, but no one helps him or anything like that. He doesn't look for it anyway. But there's a great reaction with Patsy there, like they seem to know him every time. They, they probably know my voice, but I could not go in and touch the fox. I'd more than likely get a mouthful of tea to me, <laughs> elbow or something, you know. He used to bring them into town, into schools and all that, you know. And a lot of the kids, funny enough, in town, the lakes of Thomastown, they never seen a fox or never knew what a fox was. And they're amazed that they could see something wild, like, you know. But I, I admire them greatly for looking after them, like, you know. And I, and I admire them greatly, too, for looking after the house, because it's my father and mother's house. They always got on well together, and sometimes they cooked a dinner. And, but eat, dinner, right? Eating it is another matter, though. <laughs> <laughs>
I'd, I'd rather if people like if they found cubs out in the field to leave them here there. They're not sick, they're just the mother goes off and she'll be hunting. She won't be far away from them. But people pick them up and bring, bring them out here to me. I, I think I got three last year. Like if they leave them alone, the mothers will pick them up and they'll be alright. Like, go on. Don't like, and people don't know what they're letting themselves in for taking them in anyway. I don't, I don't think it changed me really. I like, I like meeting, being gone out and people ask me or just taking photographs. Don't, or, um, but the, the only thing I don't like is people taking photographs without asking. That's a, that's an unknown with me. If they, all, all, they, all they can do is ask, you know. I'm going to enjoy life anyone. Love the foxes, love the dog, all the hens and ducks and any any kind of animals. When I go up to the cars now to do those sheep, the first thing I'd look out go out in the field to see if there's any foxes out there. <laughs> the old foxes are getting a bad name for you know, the lads going around shooting them here and they don't understand or out from towns, like never, never know anything about nature, or never try to learn anything about. It. So you might as well be talking to the wall, as you know. Well, while I have them, they'll be looked after, and I can't do any more than that. Yeah. No.